This is 4.1b, the second part of 4.1. We're going to add and subtract fractions. To add or subtract two fractions, we can rewrite the fractions so they have a common denominator, the same denominator. To do this, we use the least common multiple, the LCM, of the denominators. Here we need to add 2 thirds plus 1 sixth. They have different denominators, and we cannot add them until they have the same denominator. So the multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, and so on. The multiples of 6 are 6, 12, 18, 24, it goes on and on. But the least common multiple for 3 and 6 is 6. It's the lowest multiple they have in common. We're going to use that for our new denominator. The 1 6 can just slide over. The 2 thirds, though, needs to be changed to have a denominator of 6. We need to have this denominator, 3, become a 6. That's an easy one. 3 times 2 is 6. We need to multiply the numerator by that same number. So here we say it gets jealous. It wants to be multiplied by the same number. It wants the same multiplier. That means we're going to have 4 6. Now they have the same denominator. We can add them. 4 6 plus 1 6 is 5 6. Remember, to simplify, we divide by the greatest common factor for the numerator and denominator. But this is simplified. We know a fraction is simplified if the only common factor for the numerator and denominator is 1. Here we have 7 elevenths. 7 elevenths is simplified. The factors for 7 are 1 and 7 for 1 times 7. And the factors for 11 are 1 times 11. The only common factor they have is 1, so that's simplified. For 6 eighths, this needs to be simplified. They have a common factor of 2. 6 divided by 2 would be 3. 8 divided by 2 would be 4. It simplifies to 3 fourths. Here we need to add 1 ninth plus 5 twelfths. Now if you notice, they've got it going across like a sentence, and I'm stacking them. It's easier when you stack them to find the common denominator, because then we can multiply, and we can multiply, and then we can add them. So we have 1 ninth plus 5 twelfths. And the multiples of 9 are 9, 18, 27, 36. The multiples of 12 are 12, 24, 36. So the least common multiple is 36. So we know they're going to meet at 36. We ask ourselves, 9 times something is 36. Well, that's 9 times 4. That means we need to multiply the numerator by 4. That means we have 4, 36. And 12 times 3 is 36. That means we need to multiply the 5 times 3. It's going to give us 15. Now we can add them. They have the same denominator. 4 plus 15 is 19, and it's going to be 36. If we needed to simplify this, we would divide by the greatest common factor for the numerator and denominator, but if the numerator and denominator only have 1 as a common factor, it's simplified. The factors for 19 are 1 and 19 as 1 times 19. We're done. The answer is 1936. Just as with addition, when we subtract fractions, they need a common denominator. We have 7 twelfths minus 1 fourth. I stack them so I can give them common denominators. The multiples of 12 are 12. And it goes 24, 36, and so on. But we don't need to go that far because the multiples of 4 are 4, 8, 12. We see they can meet at 12. That's the least common multiple for 12 and 4. So this 7 twelfths is just going to slide across. And 4 times something is 12. That would be 3. 1 gets jealous. It wants to be multiplied by 3. That means we have 3 twelfths. Now we can do 7 twelfths minus 3 twelfths. We just do 7 minus 3, which is 4, and it's over 12. We can simplify this by using the GCF. 
And factors of 4 are 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. And the factors of 12 are 1 times 12, 2 times 6, 3 times 4. We see the greatest factor they have in common is a 4, so we can divide the 4 and the 12 by 4, which simplifies it to 1 third. Here we need to subtract 2 sevenths minus 1 tenth. The least common multiple for 7 and 10 is 70. So they're going to meet at the common denominator 70. We think 7 times some number is 70. Well, that'd be 7 times 10, which means the numerator needs to be multiplied by 10, which means this is 20 seventieths. And for 10 to become a 70, it needs to be multiplied by 7, which means the 1 needs to be multiplied by a 7, which means we have 7 seventieths. Now they have the common denominator. We can subtract 20 minus 7 is 13, and it'll be 70ths. And because the only factors for 13 are 1 times 13, we know that this is in simplest form. Sometimes we can find the common factor by just multiplying the 7 times the 10 to get a 70. But be careful doing this. It may not be the least common multiple, and you may end up having to simplify. When adding fractions or mixed numbers whose sum includes a fraction greater than 1, we can regroup. Here we have a denominator of 8 and 4. Well, the least common multiple for 8 and 4 is 8. They can both meet at 8. So this is just going to slide over because its denominator is already an 8. And 4 times 2 is 8. We need to multiply the numerator times 2. We get a 6. We add the whole numbers and we add the numerators. We get 5 and 11 eighths. And since 8 eighths equals one whole, if you had a candy bar split into 8 parts and you had all 8 of them, you'd have the whole candy bar. So 8 eighths is equal to one whole. That would be 5 and 1 is 6 and 3 eighths. Now, when we were talking before about the 7 and the 10 and just multiplying them together to get the common denominator, look what would happen if we multiplied 8 times 4 for a common denominator that we would get 32. We would have 2 and 20 30 seconds over 3 and 24 30 seconds. We could do it this way, but we would have 5 and 44 30 seconds. How many 32s are in 44? There's one of them. So that's going to go to the 5, so now that's a 6. We have 12 left over. We have 6 and 12 30 seconds. Now we have to simplify it again. 4 can go into 12 and into 32 we would have 3 eighths, the same answer. So, but then we're getting into really great size denominators. It's easier to keep the denominator as a lower number. We can subtract by making common denominators and fractions greater than 1. Here we have 4 and a half minus 1 and 2 thirds. We need to find a common denominator. They can both meet at 6 as their least common multiple, and 3 times 2 is 6, and so we do 2 times 2, which is 4, so 1 and 2 thirds becomes 1 and 4 6, and 2 times 3 is 6, so we need to multiply 1 times 3, this 4 and a half becomes 4 and 3 6. So now, when we look at the numerators, we have a 3 minus a 4. We don't have enough to take 4 away. What we could do is turn it into a fraction greater than 1. We do, if you remember, the whole number 4 times the denominator, that's 24, and then we add the numerator. 25, 26, 27, we put it over that denominator, we have 27 6. Here, we would do 1 times 6 plus 4. That's 6 and 4 more, that's 10 written over that denominator, we have 10 6. Now we can do 27 minus 10, because we're doing subtraction. That's going to give us 17 6. Now we can simplify it. We can think of the fraction bar as a division sign and think 17 divided by 6. That would be a 6, 6 plus another 6, 6 plus a 5, 6 to have 6 plus 6 is 12 plus 5 more is 17. So we would have 1 plus 1 plus 5, 6. It's 2 
and 5 6. So if you ever have a numerator that's not great enough to subtract the other numerator, try turning it into a fraction greater than 1 and then subtracting, as long as they have the same denominator. If you had any trouble with this adding or subtracting fractions, I'm going to have links to 5th grade math chapter 6 videos that can help you, where we first learned about adding and subtracting fractions. I even model how to do it. Our next lesson is kind of a setup for lesson 4.2. We're going to talk about transforming equations to divide fractions, but lesson 4.2 is about dividing fractions also. It's always good to completely understand a lesson before moving on to the next one. That way, your confusion doesn't become greater and greater. Have a wonderful day. Hit the like button if you understood this, and I'll see you next time. Bye.